All right, guys, here we go. Y'all ready? His purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. <clears throat> guys, with what's coming on the world right now, I'm going to give you a brief glimpse into the world, and then I'm going to announce that there's going to be a get-together at the Ark. Um, the Lord has con conveyed very, very, very clearly to have a get-together, a meet-and-greet. Here here we are. Jonathan's going to make himself available uh, to anybody that wants to come hang out, kind of like Grand Junction. We're going to do a meet-and-greet uh at the last event, he had me lay hands on a little girl that was blind, legally blind. She's got almost perfect vision now. There was a really cool baptism. People wanted me to baptize them there, to which I had to decline. It just wasn't the right venue for me to baptize people. But the Lord literally had a thunderstorm come over and rain on the people in the yard. And it wasn't even raining on the street. The front street, it was phenomenal. It was, the Lord's like, okay, I'm going to baptize everybody that's here. So the Lord literally baptized the crowd. It was the Lord himself. You guys saw the eye in the sky out at the ark? The Lord the Lord conveyed to me, we are the stars. Those of y'all that ended up here, you are the stars when you look up. That's your home. You're one of the stars. And he said, if I would step out on faith and show it to uh, Corey and Zach, and uh, invite Jim and Karen to go out there. Karen's a lady that had stage four cancer that the Lord let me lay hands on. And Jim is her husband who was not saved. Karen prayed for the salvation of her husband instead of asking for the Lord to heal her. And her husband got converted and he started the ark. So anyway, so the ark is up and running. Uh, uh, I need to be very clear. This is not a to receive people to live at the Ark event. I'll say it again. This is not to receive people like, hey, everybody come live at the Ark. Not at all. This is a, an event like Grand Junction, a meet and greet. Everybody get together, fellowship. Um, if the Lord has me lay hands on somebody, then he has me lay hands on somebody. Um, whatever he's going to do, he's going to do. <laughs> That's the best way I can say it. He just shows up in his own way. I'm not going to try and presume what he's going to do because if I do, I'll be wrong anyway. Anyway, so that's going to happen and it's going to be uh, February 8, uh, 19th and 20th. I guess people will be showing up on the 18th. We're trying to rent a, uh, it's like a location which is about a mile away down the street from the Ark and they have a facility there that has parking and uh, outdoor fire pits and people could hang out and meet up there because the ark itself wouldn't be able to get a bunch of cars in and stuff like that we can get some cars parked on the street but we'll have a location there that people can meet up at just like we did in grand junction and we will provide a map a way of seeing where you are and and the whole deal now here's another thing in grand junction i told everybody that came to grand junction be prepared to show an ID that you are who you say you are. Uh, just because of the way the enemy works, the enemy tries to infiltrate and and show up at stuff like that. Uh, Grand Junction went out, went off without any hitches. Uh, we have, uh, we will have armed police there. They will be armed, and there will be police. Uh, if you can't provide an ID and you show up in your, uh, you know, we're pretty easy going. But if you show up and things look odd. We will be able to, you know, find out using uh, police um, methods on your identity. And the reason I say that is because there's been a lot of threats that have come through uh, YouTube towards me. I, I really don't care. Um, the thing is, I'm concerned about the well-being and the safety of all the people that show up. And so just like at Grand Junction, we had armed security guards. And if anybody did the wrong thing, well, then they have to deal with what happens to them. Um, just a heads up. The other thing is the, I do keep metadata from people that have made uh, comments that are uh, threatening. And so a lot of people that have come and made 
comments, uh, I, I'll simply type back to you, thank you for your metadata. That means you went into a somewhat, some sort of a database that you could be easily identified if you show up, just FYI. Okay, so anyway, so now here's the deal, guys. Uh, <laughs> there's so many miracles that have rolled out in the past week. I'm just, <laughs> it's like I can't keep track of them. And I'm not kidding. I can't keep track of them. There's too many miracles. And the Lord put it on me. It's time to meet. And I, I said, well, what exactly is it? Grand Junction was the getting together in Grand Junction for the shipping containers. And I was, he told me he wanted me to skydive into the thing. It was not my idea. As a matter of fact, I said no to Michael, uh, uh, whose house it was at. He, uh, he said he felt like the Lord was telling him to do a tandem. And he asked me if I would do one. I didn't even, I didn't say no. I said, not even no, but hell no, I'm not, I'm not gonna skydive into a party that we're putting on. It's just was a little too ostentatious for me. And I, I, I said, no. And then I heard the Lord say, I want you to skydive in and I want you to get a parachute that says, V for Vin. He said, I want you to get a canopy with a layover. That's what he told me. And I was so shocked that the Lord said that I hung up the phone on Michael. And then I prayed with Kat. And I said, if you want me to do that, you're going to show me. And uh, I do what I do sometimes when I don't know and I need an answer. And there's no way that I'll be able to get that answer by opening up a 800,000 word book. It's almost like saying there's no way I can open this book and it'll show me. And I told the Lord that. I said, if you want me to do that and you really want me to do it, I'm going to open this book and it's going to tell me somehow you want me to get a canopy with a layover and skydive into the Grand Junction event. I did that with Cat as a witness. For for those of y'all that have been around for a while, you you know what happened. So I it's called casting a lot. I don't. Some people have started thinking that you can do that. Uh, bad idea. I'm a I'm a harbinger. I'm just telling you. A lot of people, oh, I need my answer. I'll just open it. No, it's not the way it works. It's not a gumball machine. It's not a candy machine. Um, it's been a way to communicate with me since the night I got saved, since I, he had me read the tags in my clothes. Anyway, long story short, I cast a lot, and it said canopy layover stuntman right there in front of me, and I was like, okay, well, now I have to do it. So I did. And it was a very supernatural get together. The Lord baptized the crowd himself. It was sunny outside. He made it rain in the backyard. People got slightly wet, but not soaking wet, just enough to know they got rained on a little bit. Then it was gone and the sun was out. It was mind boggling. Uh, Lexi, the little girl that was legally blind, the Lord had me lay hands on her and she's got almost perfect vision. Uh, and there was a whole lot of miracles that just happened. It was super super amazing. So anyway, he's put it on me. It's time to have a get together. The containers are at the ark. I don't know if you understand how supernatural that is. I'd like to show you the Bible so you can see what the Bible says. It says in Isaiah 54, and I'll read it to you. You know what? Let me, let me just read to you Isaiah 54 real quick, because I think it's really important. So let me do this. And then I'm going to show you guys some news, and I'm going to show you something that should blow your minds. Okay, here we go. Let's do Isaiah 54. Sorry, I didn't have eSword open yet. So here we go. <clears throat> we'll give this a moment just to open. Okay, here we go. We're going to go to Isaiah verse 54. And the Lord, the Lord sent me to Isaiah 54 to show me the, the, the get-together in Grand Junction. And... Here's what he gave to me as a scripture. And he said, For a moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. Let me, let me enlarge this. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. <clears throat> For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so I have sworn I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills shall be removed. 
but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace, right there, see that? The covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath, hath mercy on thee. Okay, so he says in this scripture, I want to show you this one moment. So here in verse 9, uh, the Lord says, <clears throat> For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, for I have sworn, sworn, Shabbat. It means properly to complete, um, to swear by oneself, to take an oath. And I don't know if you guys know or understand what that oath was. It was a rainbow. So as I have sworn that I would never, I would not flood the, the world again as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so I have sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. So the Lord showed me this before the Grand Junction event. And the event was at the corner of Rainbow Avenue. That was the covenant the Lord made with Noah, that he would put a rainbow in the sky. The rainbow was the covenant of peace, uh, the covenant with Noah, that water should no more go over the earth. It was a rainbow. <clears throat> the event in Grand Junction was at 154 Rainbow Avenue. And the Lord told me, Jonathan, I want you to look up the number one. The biblical meaning of the number one is the number one is the only number that stands alone and it encompasses all other numbers. It is the number of the Lord God. It stands alone yet encompasses all other numbers and it is the unity of the singular God. And then he told me to look up 54. He, I, he told me to type Bible meaning of 54, which I typed into Google. It brought up Isaiah 54. He had me read this, and when I read it, I was like, okay, so this is kind of weird. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. As I have sworn, that swear was a rainbow, that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So right here, when I read that, I was like, well, that's crazy. This event is happening on Rainbow Avenue, 154 Rainbow. And I know I'm reading, as I have sworn to my servant Noah, with a, in the rainbow was that covenant, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, or, nor rebuke thee, and I neither shall I, the covenant of my peace be removed. See that? The covenant, the compact, look what it means in the sense of cutting by passing between pieces of flesh. Think of us being hybrids. As, think about it. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Now, because his purpose was to make one new man from the right side up, you and the upside down you, they're two different, uh, they're two different races. The, the serpent race in Genesis 1, that's why you see Adidas original and everyone's upside down, and the Edemic race from Genesis 2. And those two bred together and you have the earth and everybody in it. So he showed me this before the event in Grand Junction. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Okay, well, in Grand Junction, the event was on Rainbow, and Casimir, the corner lot. The Lord told me to look up the meaning of Casimir. So here you go. Casimir, see, C-A-S-I-M-I-R, Casimir of Slav Slavic origin. It means proclamation of peace. So now try and wrap your brain around this, that the guy that the Lord told to skydive in to Grand Junction with a parachute that says V for vengeance. He says, I've made a covenant with Noah, so shall I make a covenant with you of everlasting peace, and neither shall my covenant of peace be removed from thee. Do you know how impossible that is? That the corner lot where the shipping containers were was Rainbow and Casimir. As I made a covenant with Noah, Rainbow, so shall I make a covenant with you of peace. My peace will not of everlasting peace. So if you're me and you're skydiving into a get together that the Lord told you to skydive into, and it's a grand junction, grand junction means 
Grand means the great. Junction means coming together. I was very hopeful that that would be like where we all got to leave this place called the earth. But the Lord was setting things up. And uh, <clears throat> there was a lot more for me to do in my ministry. I have resolved the mystery of the Bible. The mystery, when I say, let me, let me restate that. The Lord God has used me to resolve the mystery of the Bible. That's why my name means Yahweh has given. That's what Jonathan means. Yahweh has given. The name Klek means a messenger that rings a bell and gathers the church. So for me to be having another get together in a place called the Ark, well, what happened? Think about Rainbow, which was the covenant the Lord made with Noah, who put everybody in the Ark and they were okay because he did what the Lord said. Now the the two shipping containers ended up at a place called the Ark by a bizarre set of circumstances because Michael and his wife, who were living in Grand Junction, they decided to leave and the shipping containers were potentially at risk of being part of a property uh, sell or if anyone defaulted on the mortgage, then the then the containers would be in trouble. So the Lord told me to go get those shipping containers and send them to the ark. I had nothing to do with starting the ark, nothing. I just went and laid hands on uh, Karen Sullivan and uh, she was cured of stage four cancer. Her husband, Jim, who used to hate listening to my videos, he got converted. He's a good friend of mine now. He started the ARC as, uh, and it stands for Angel Recover, uh, Refugee Center. Angel Refugee Center ARC, A-R-C. Anyway, so Jim started the whole thing. You know, it was uh, an expression of his gratitude for God saving him because he got it. He got inverted and he got it. So anyway, long story short, I go up and I get the shipping containers. I'm on Highway 50 leaving Grand Junction in a search and rescue vehicle. And there's a blockage at uh, a pass on Highway 50. And a big boulder rolls off and crushes this guy in front of us. And the, just right in the on the street in front of us, the guy gets crushed by a giant boulder. His name meant Dominant Ruler. That was the name of the guy that was crushed by the boulder because it came out in the paper a couple days later that his name was, I forget, we have it in the folder. And so I'm on Highway 50, and the guy gets crushed by a boulder. Now think of Daniel uh, 2. And in the days of those kings shall the great God of heaven set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. And the rock from the, that was hewn from the quarry without hands shall crush all these other kingdoms. And I get, I, I'm in a line where a rock crushes a guy named Dominant Ruler. And then the Lord tells me, you know, then I, because I have a search and rescue vehicle, when the cop came driving up, racing up to the scene where the guy's crushed, he stops and looks at my vehicle and he looks at me and I said, hey, I heard a guy just got crushed up there. Can, and, he, and he said, yeah, you look like you got pretty good intel. <clears throat> I kind of chuckled a little bit and I said, I do. And uh, he said, well, why don't you get out of line and go back the other way, you and those containers? Because I asked him, I said, can me and these guys get out of line? He said, you guys go ahead and make a UE and y'all go the other way. So we did. So I made a U-turn, a U-turn on Highway 50. And 50 means, uh, let's let's look, uh, the Lord said, look up 50 in the Bible. And I was like, look up 50 in the Bible, really? So here we go. Let's do it right now so I can even remember all the craziness that happens. Strong's 50. Uh, my father is rescue, right? It means my father is rescue. And I'm in a search and rescue vehicle making a U-turn with two containers that represent the bride of Christ and the judgment seat. Just think about that. Do you understand what an insane miracle that is? That the shipping containers that were at Rainbow and Casimir, Covenant of Peace, uh, Rainbow and Casimir, Proclamation of Peace, are leaving Grand Junction, going to the Ark, and they make a U-turn and I'm leading them in a search and rescue vehicle with a right side up triangle and an upside down triangle is part of my logo in my, my life before. What? <laughs> it's insane. Hold on. 
And so we make a UE and I get the containers to the art. The containers are there now. We've we've worked on some buildings and we've made things, you know, uh, workable to where, you know, there's bathrooms and places for people to use a restroom, take a shower, get clean, whatever. And there's a, there's a small group of people that are living at the ark, not very many. There's a family from Canada that was being uh, kind of herded into the Canadian uh, insanity and they came down and we have Zach there and we have a couple other people. But anyway, we just are working on a building right now for this get together. So we have bathrooms and showers and all that good stuff. So anyway, so that's what's happening. And the Lord put it to me out of nowhere. I want you to have a get together. Right after he showed me the stars with the eye in the sky on the very night that I was revealing that the Lord told me, if you go and you show them what I've shown you, I will show up and prove it's true. And if you don't believe me, when you get to the, when you get to the uh, event, ask Corey and Zach. They were in the car with me. I was like, guys, here's the deal. The Lord's telling me that if I just step out on faith, I'm going to show you something you probably won't believe. But tonight when we're done working, we'll go back to the ark and I'll reveal to you what the Lord showed me. And I start buzzing. I said, the Lord said, he'll show up and prove it's true. And so we went out there, just like he told me, the clouds made a ring around the moon and made a, a pupil, an iris that was colored. The iris was actually colored. <laughs> and the moon made this eye in the sky and all the stars were still the stars were still out when i say all the stars there's plenty of stars still all out and visible and the lord told me look up and show him and he showed up and i was like wow that's insane so anyway i documented all that that's part of the last video or two videos ago or something so i've been in i've been over there at the ark diligently plugging away trying to get the work done um, cause he told me we are going to have a get together and the get together is going to be, the get together is going to be on the 18th. Hang on one sec, guys. Let me, let me get these off my head. Just, yeah. So anyway, the get together is going to be on the 19th and 20th at the Ark in Beach City. And we're going to provide a map for everybody. So you can get there very easily. It's, it's not hard to find. It's right off interstate 10. And uh, I just encourage anyone that wants to come and see miracles and be part of a fellowship and get to see the shipping containers. The shipping containers are literally miracles. They're like harbingers themselves. The Lord had me do it. He designed them himself. He had me just do the artwork, but he just used me to do the artwork. And then he had me step out on faith and and proclaim what they were, and they've proven to be 100% every bit exactly what he said. Uh, I mean, no one can fake Highway 50 with a, a rock crushing a guy in his name, and dominant ruler. And if you look at, you know what? Let's go look at. Uh, let's go look at Daniel 2. Let's go look at Daniel. Daniel 2. So let's see. Daniel 2. Here we go. There we go, about Nebuchadnezzar's king. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. You see that? That's Elah. Ella. It's the singular form of Elohim. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Okay, hang on one sec. It just bounced to, <laughs> that, did y'all see that? Uh, it just switched to John 3, only begotten son. I don't know how that happened. Something weird just happened. Here we go. So, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Uh, but, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. It shall stand, look at that word, to stand up. See it? To rise up. See it? To raise up. Because we all got turned up, you guys. It shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest the stone, Eben, and that's the same as when the two stones that I put in the shipping containers You'll get to see those stones. 
For as much as the stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, and the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known what shall come to the king, what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. And I'm just going to look at you and be very blunt. I am the sequel to this scripture because I've delivered the shipping containers that represent the bride of Christ and the judgment seat. That's why I have a parachute that says V for vengeance, for goodness sakes. That's why the moon, when I looked up, it turned to an X. The moon literally turned to an X that is identical to my parachute. I was like, <laughs> I freaked out. I was like, so anyway, you can't even think this stuff up. But I wanted to make you guys aware that this is coming. I want you guys to know that we are going to have a get together at the Ark, and it's going to be February 19th and 20th, Saturday and Sunday. Um, and again, and a word of warning to anyone that you know uh, has the wrong idea: you reap what you sow. So if you show up with the wrong intention, then I'm sure the Lord will make sure your wrong intention turns on your own head. I guarantee it. So anyway, so hopefully no one's foolish enough to do that. All right. So <laughs> guys, I'm exhausted. I'm just so tired. Anyway, I've been working really hard to try and get this done. Um, there is a pile of miracles, uh, I want, I want to show you guys something that's going on so you really understand. I want you to really understand what you're looking at. Y'all understand that's a T-Rex, right? That is the eye of a T-Rex, and those are the teeth of a T-Rex, the open mouth. I mean, this is the T-Rex's back right here. You know, this is the head and the back of a T-Rex. Y'all understand that, right? Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrant Lizard King. That's what T-Rex stands for. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, that is the Obama presidential portrait. I just I just showed y'all what was hidden in this portrait because I have a very unique gift. And the gift that the Lord God gave me is a confirming witness to the Bible. And so I'll just put the T-Rex right there. So why is there a T-Rex that's in Obama's presidential portrait? The Lord told me just to draw in the changes of shadow. The Lord let the Lord drew this picture. I didn't draw it. The Lord drew it through me. So why is it that this guy right here has a T-Rex in his presidential portrait? Why is it that it's the serpent from the Garden of Eden in the presidential portrait? Why? Let me show you something real quick that most of y'all may or may not know. When we pulled out of Afghanistan, this is what was left behind for the Taliban. They got 33 Black Hawk helicopters, uh, 23 light attack airplanes, uh, 33 counterinsurgent planes. They got 43 helicopters, uh, Hercules uh, 130 transports. They got 3,012 Humvees with machine guns. They got 31 armored personnel carriers, uh, over 3,500 machine guns. $87 billion in equipment was left for the Taliban. Now, if you're going to pull out of a country, wouldn't you just destroy all your crap in place? Of course you would. But if you're the Mahdi, which is the Islamic uh, Messiah that's going to lead the Islamic Jihad and turn the whole world to Islam, if you're that guy, well, then it would be smart to leave it all over there and make it look like, oh, Biden just screwed up. He's just a dumbass. But... You'd have to be the guy pulling the strings if you to do that, right? Let me show you a video real quick. Let me show you a video. These are our show notes right here. Let me show you our show notes. And let me show you what's in them. Hang on one sec. Let me let me get the volume going real quick. Just give me a moment. Bird told me that you said you might be retiring. Before I get rid of you, which I'm enjoying you so much. Okay, pay very close attention. This is Jean Saki, who is just a lunatic. She's she's a sick, sick woman. She's a liar. She lies all the time. The Bible says if you're a liar, you're a child of Satan because Satan is a lot a liar and the father of it. So let's hear what she says. We all know she's a liar. She lies all the time, constantly. 
I'll circle back to that, she says all the time. She just lies, lies, and lies. Let's hear what she said. Before I, I get rid of you, which I'm enjoying you so much today. Mm -hmm. I really am. I'm enjoying you too. Thank you. Thanks for having me. But I, a little bird told me that you said you might be retiring and resigning the job this year. And say it isn't so. <laughs> Is it true? I, you know, I, I don't know when I'm leaving. Uh, this is an honor and a privilege, and I love working for President Ob President Biden, President Ob President Ob President Ob President Biden every single day. I love spending time with him, hearing what's on his mind. Before I, I get rid of you, which I'm enjoying you so much today, I really am. I'm enjoying you too. Thank you. Thanks for having me. But I, a little bird told me that you said you might be retiring, resigning the job this year. Say it isn't so. <laughs> is it true? <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know when I'm leaving. Uh, this is an honor and a privilege, and I love working for President Ob President Biden. President Ob President Ob Okay, so y'all heard it. Okay, y'all heard that, right? I'm just saying it's kind of weird. I mean, I just have to say that's very strange that you would say that. Um, it's very weird that these guys right here ended up with all this military equipment. And it's very weird that, uh, you know, that the same guy we're talking about now, he happens to be the serpent in the garden in the presidential portrait that was done by Kehinde Wiley, uh, which does portraits of white women with their heads cut off with uh, black women holding their heads. I mean, no big deal, right? Let's make sure you guys understand what I'm talking about. There's a, there's the presidential portrait. That's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I love you in Christ. But nobody can tell me that's not a T-Rex because I drew it in myself. And it's in the painting. It's hidden in the watermarks. So let's see. Let me show you one more. Let me show you one more thing. All right. So here's a folder that I've had for a long, 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 long time. And let me just cut to the chase. Um... Here is the serpent. Here's the head of a serpent. And there's the serpent in the garden right behind this guy. Right there. It's right behind his head. I outlined it right here. In case you can't see it. I outlined it in dark green. There's a fang right here on his head. It turns into a sperm. There's another fang here made by the shadow. So this is a serpent with its mouth open striking. But the fang turns into a sperm. Um, here is proof that I drew in that picture every line. See all the lines in it? I reversed it. I turned it the opposite direction and drew it in with the sun coming through the window. So this is not some weird coincidence. This is a fact. This is a fact. So why is it so? And why is this guy that's standing here with him looking at it, admiring it? It's the serpent in the garden. Why is that? That the same guy that did that painting did a painting of identical or fraternal twin girls. And the, this girl's hand right here turns into a raptor's, a raptor's face. Watch. You see right there, look at her hand. Ready? I'll just go down, go down, go down. So she made one girl, one twin girl's hand turn into the face of a raptor. There you go. See the raptor? I'm going to move the raptor. You see, that's the eye of the raptor. That's the face open mouth of the raptor. So why would you do identical twin girls in a painting, Kehinde Wiley, the same guy that did the presidential portrait? Because it's true. That's Genesis 1, Parthenogenesis. It's a serpent race eating the other race. There it is. Don't you think it's weird that the place we're having the get-together is two identical twin girls, Kathy and Karen Sullivan. One of them was dying of cancer. She had stage four cancer, and it was actually called an apple core cancer, and it, an apple core makes a five-pointed star. I wonder what the odds are. <laughs> anyway, just making a point. You get it? Anyway, so it looks like something really exciting may happen. I'm hoping it's the end of everything, and I hope the end of the world's here. I really do. Because I'm tired and I've rang the bell. And I've rang, I've rung that bell very loudly for a long time. And all this information has been out for a long time. I wonder why you would have a, a car that had a T-Rex eating an ictus, which represents a Christian. I wonder why the fish is upside down and the T-Rex is eating it. Because it's true, that's why. 
I wonder why VW, which was made like by Hitler, is two intersecting Vs making an X in the middle of the two intersecting Vs for the female chromosome representing the two different races. I wonder why the same thing is done in Westworld. You know, I could I could postulate on a lot of stuff, but I can assure you that this is a fact right here. And I just did a rudimentary uh, drawing. There you go. There's a serpent from the Garden of Eden. And there the fangs are, mouth wide open. But I've done it in very close detail, and I can assure you it's there. And it's in these folders. I've drawn in again, and that's a serpent, guys. There's the eye of the serpent coming out of the nose of the serpent, eye of the serpent coming to the nose. And right here is a T-Rex facing this direction, and this direction is a dead sheep with its tongue sticking out. So anyway, um, anyone that doesn't believe it, that's okay. You're, you're just not cut of the same cloth as I am. If this is these are facts. I'm just giving you facts. Okay, I'm super whipped, super tired. My eyes feel like they're bleeding because uh, I haven't had enough uh, sleep probably, and I haven't had uh, enough time away from a, a screen for a while. One more image: Michelle Obama's dress. That's that's DNA on her dress. That's why they did it like that. That's her first lady portrait. Why did they make her hand? The same, why they do this the same as an ostrich? I know why. Because the Egyptian pantheon of gods, if when you die, if your conscience or your heart isn't as light as an ostrich feather, they feed it to a, they feed your heart to a crocodile god that consumes your essence. And that's why, that's who these guys are. There it is. That's who they are. This is the Egyptian pantheon of gods. There they are. Anyway, over and over and over and over and over again. And here is the Scorpions album called Moment of Glory. Moment of Glory when the queen, the reptile that started the whole host body system is up and running. And I can tell you who that is. The same guy that I showed you in the presidential portrait has a T-Rex. Pretty crazy. Female energy. Don't worry about the body. Worry about the, the energy one takes and one gives. Male gives, female takes. The host body system was the, an elaborate design for angels that went for the forbidden fruit. And this is what you got yourselves into. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just trying to be very, uh, just get it out. Okay, anyway. The 18th, 19th, uh, well, the 19th and the 20th, I will post on here uh, a map and all that as soon as we get it. And a little closer to the date, I'll make uh, all the information available where that's going to be and give you guys directions, anyone that wants to come. And again, there will be armed police there. All right. Peace and grace.